will they have his day um, is on Friday. One of the things is because we have this type of fellowship that we have, isn't it? We can share with our friends, we could um, share experiences, we could have our testimonies. And all of this sums up with a feeling of joy in our system. And when you have feelings of joy in your system, it usually overflows. And once it overflows, you spread it to your friends, to your relatives, as well as to your fellow church members. But there are times when there are obstacles that we have to face um, during Fridays. Sometimes we have this obstacle of anxiety within ourselves. Oh, what will I wear on Sabbath? Oh, what will I do? Or oh, when will I meet this, uh, this guy? Those are obstacles. Those are what the enemies have been trying to give us. And perhaps this, this lesson that we have this morning is a continuation of the Sabbath school lesson that we have in terms of vulnerabilities, in terms of weakness, in terms of strength. That means 
Once you have a health center, people get organized. They want to assist in the health center. They want to assist, they want to put in the resources. They become motivated to do more things. And that focus of development spreads all over the place. It only does not affect the health center itself. It affects the school. It affects the system. It affects the things. This is what you call capacity building in terms of community. The same way as a church, as, as a whole. Um, we can, as a whole, build ourselves towards a certain goal. Um, you have the organization, you have the resources, and you have the motivation. As a whole, you are already on the way to success if you have those three important things in terms of community building. Um, let me give you another term, capacity development. There are goals that we have to take, and these goals we have to reach. All of us have capacity to reach a certain level, maybe different from one another, but all of us have, have a capacity to reach a certain level. Um, they call it community capacity building, referred to as capacity development. It is an approach, a conceptual approach to social or personal development. Social means the group as a whole, and personal development that focuses on understanding the obstacles that inhibit people, governments, organizations from realizing their development goals. So, this is one term we should, in fact, open time use in our community, so capacity development. We look at obstacles. Why is it that we're not moving towards our goal? What obstacles are preventing us from doing these things? What can we do to remove these obstacles? What can we do to remove these vulnerabilities? What can we do to develop our strengths? Um, let's illustrate this example in one of the paragraphs that was given in the Bible. If you want to turn your Bible, you could turn to Matthew 25. Let's look at verses 14 and 15. For the kingdom of God is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. According to his ability. That means we are given different talents according to our ability. And immediately he went on a journey, 16 to 17. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. Were there obstacles when they achieved those goals? There were no obstacles. They reached their goals because they removed the obstacles that are facing them. Okay, let's move on. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground, and he distorts money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me the talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside him. The Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. 22, 23. He who also had two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. And his Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over the things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy 
of your Lord. So those two, uh, given five talents and two talents three, uh, have obstacles perhaps along the way, but they remove those obstacles away. And let's look at this guy with uh, one talent. 25, 24, 25. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. One obstacle. You are a hard man, Lord. Reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So you are a hard man, Lord. Mahirap kang ano? Pakisamahan, mahirap kang banggay. So you are a hard man. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But this Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seeds, so you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore take the talent from him and give it to him who has had ten hands. So the obstacle, the last one, the one talent, the obstacle you mentioned it, I know you were a hard man. I'm afraid you, you, you might give me problems if you want. That's the obstacle that he has encountered. He did not remove it. That's the vulnerability. So what happened? He was not able to achieve his goal. So these obstacles must be removed along the way. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away and cast an profitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let's analyze it again. Uh, those who have received the five and the two talents return to the Lord, entrusted the gifts of their increase. In doing this, they claim no merit for themselves. There were no obstacles. We can do it. Their talents are those that have been delivered to them. They have gained other talents, but there could have been no gain without the deposit. They see that they have done only their duty. Was there an obstacle in doing it? No. Okay. But when the master receives the talent, he approves and rewards the workers as though the merit were all their own. His countenance is full of joy and satisfaction. Is filled with the delight that he had bestowed blessings upon them. Let's look at the one with one talent. Thus men excuse their neglect of God's gifts. They look upon God as severe and tyrannical, as watching to spy out their mistakes and visit them with judgment. This is the one with one talent. There are some people who are like this, and we have to remove this obstacle. They change him with demanding what he has never given, with reaping where he has not sown. There are many who in their hearts charge God with being a hard master because he claims their possession and their service. But we can bring to God nothing that is not already his. All things come of thee, said King David, and of thine own have we even the okay uh, talking of uh, obstacles obstruction um, one of the um, communists in the United States um, in terms of illness very silent very very silent illness is what you call hypercholesterolemia some would say hyperlipidemia uh, throughout your life um, the high level of cholesterol that you are having could practically block the whole system, the whole body that you have. Um, of course, this is one of the major causes of your heart attack. You block the vessel in your heart, you have a heart attack, you have coronary disease, and these deposits go on, on and on and on and on. You um, have your arteries in your, in your lower extremities affected, um, wherein those are blocked, uh, 
uh, and you have peripheral arterial disease, and eventually you will have sores in your feet, and eventually you will have gangrene in your feet. Um, these are obstacles that uh, are in your body. Um, and of course in your brain, if you have hypercholesterolemia and hyperlipidemia, you can have stroke eventually. Um, because the blood vessels are blocked, blood plus come in, and you could have stroke. And this could be prevented simply by controlling your diet in terms of cholesterol and doing your regular exercise. So that's one obstacle we should remove in our body. Um, let's uh, go to Acts 1.8. Um, I'll read the last days. Can you see uh, signs uh, of the times that we are in the last days? We, we see different things happening all over the place. Um, and we know that we are uh, in the last days. Um, Acts 1 But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the outermost part of the earth. Together with the last days, there's also what you call power that will be given by the Holy Spirit. As Pastor would say, it's the latter rain that we are waiting for. But why is it? Why is it that it's not being power to us at this point in time? What's happening? What are the obstacles that's causing it not to be part of? What are the things happening all around us that is causing this latter rain not to be part of? Let's see. We are living the last days in a time when we may expect much from the Lord. This word should bring us to the throne of grace to claim great things of Him. Here the promise is given that on the men and women and our sons and daughters, the Holy Spirit is to come, and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So during these last days, we expect also the Holy Spirit to come. And this is the power that we is given to us. Those people who will be given this will be saved. In the closing scenes of this earth's history, many children and youths who receive a true Christian education will astonish people by their witness to the truth, which will be home born in simplicity yet with spirit and power. They have been taught the fear of the Lord and their hearts have been softened by a careful and prayerful study of the Bible. Of course, um, the Pope Ami, who is going around here, he will be given power later on if he studies the Word of the Lord. He will have the Holy Spirit. Our children and our daughters will practically have it. Um, let's, let's try to review and see what happened before? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house and where they were sitting, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts 2 2 to 4. The Spirit came upon the disciples. The Infinite One revealed Himself in power to His church. This was the initial reign. It was asleep for ages, this influence had been held in restraint. And now having the choice of being able to power out upon the church the riches of the Spirit's grace. It has happened before. It will happen or it's happening now. The outpouring of the Spirit in the days of the apostles was the former reign. And glorious was the result, but the latter reign will be more abundant. To the end of time, the presence of the Spirit is to abide with the true church. But near the end of earth's harvest, a special bestowal of the spiritual grace is promised to prepare the church for the coming of the Son of Man. This outpouring of the Spirit is likened to the falling 
of the latter rain. And it is for this added power that the Christians are to send their petitions to the Lord of the harvest. In the time of the latter rain, in response, the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain. We should at this point in time ask for the Holy Spirit's guidance in terms of our needs. Those only who are constantly receiving fresh supplies of grace will have power proportionate to their daily need and their ability to use that power. Instead of looking forward to some future time when, through a special endowment of spiritual power, they will receive a miraculous fitting up for the soul winning, they are yielding themselves daily to God, that He may make them vessels meet for His shoes. Don't you want this power? Don't you want this Holy Spirit to come and to shower to us at this point in time? So what are the obstacles, some of the obstacles that is preventing this lottery from being out to us? What, what, what are the causes that should be removed, in fact? These obstacles should be removed from our system. It is not because of any restriction on God's part that the riches of His gifts do not flow to men. His gift is God-like. He gave with a liberal, liberality that men do not appreciate because they do not have love to receive. If all were willing to receive, all would be filled with the Spirit. We are too easily satisfied. We're just satisfied with what we have at this point in time. We're not even asking God for the battery. We are too easily satisfied with a ripple on the surface. We just are on the surface and we are already satisfied. We do not want to go in there and fight for it and have the Holy Spirit come to us. When it is our privilege to expect the deep moving of the Spirit of God. We are the ones satisfied with just simple things, with the service things. We are not asking God to give it to us, to provide us that power. Another obstacle. When the reception of this gift, all other gifts would be ours, for we are to have this gift according to the plentitude of the riches of the grace of Christ. And He is ready to supply every soul according to the capacity to receive. Then let us not be satisfied with only a little of this blessing. What is this? Ask for it. Provide me the Holy Spirit. Provide me more blessing. Only that amount which will keep us from the slumber of death. But let us diligently seek for the abundance of the grace of God. Another obstacle. We are weak in faith. We do not have faith. Promise after promise is given. Assuring us of the fullness of the power that God has. And yet we are so weak in faith that we do not grasp that power, that Holy Spirit. Oh, how much we need to live in earnest faith in the truths of God's Word. This great need of God's people is constantly before me. Um, I think this is one important thing. Uh, it has been mentioned and there was, uh, at least it is written, why the Holy Spirit is not coming into our system. Instead of being worked by the Holy Spirit, many even among those engaged in the solid work of God are barring the way against its holy life-giving influence. They freely criticize and judge their brethren. And yet they do not realize the necessity of earnestly looking into the divine mirror to see what spirit they themselves are manifesting. We try to criticize others, but we don't look at ourselves. This is this point has been mentioned as one of the obstacles why the Holy Spirit is not coming to our system. When God's people are worked by the Holy Spirit, they will manifest a seal that is according to knowledge. They will reflect the light that God has given has been given for years. The spirit of criticism will be put away. Filled with a spirit of humility, they will be of one mind, 
united with one another and with Christ. Only to those who want humbly, who wait humbly from upon God, who watch for His guidance and grace, is the Spirit given. The power of God awaits the demand and reception. This promised blessing, claimed by faith, brings all other blessings in its train. It is given according to the riches of the grace of Christ and is ready to supply every soul according to the capacity to receive. When a man is filled with the Spirit, the more severely he is tested and tried, the more clearly he proves that he is a representative of Christ. The peace that dwells in the soul is seen on the continents. The words and action express the love of the Savior. There is no striving for the highest place. Self is renounced. The name of Jesus is written and all that is said and done. Look at this power. And we are simply not asking it. We are putting the obstacles along the way for the Holy Spirit to come to our system. Let's remove those obstacles. Let's have this power. Let's ask the Lord for this Holy Spirit to guide us, to give us this power. <laughs>